Welcome to the registration webinar presented by the California Attorney General's Registry of Charitable Trusts, or the Registry for short. The Registry is responsible for administering the registration and reporting requirements for charities, charitable trusts, and charitable fundraisers operating in California. To operate and solicit in California, charitable organizations need to file their initial registration form with the registry and must renew their registration each year. Please keep in mind that the registry is part of the California Department of Justice, a separate government office from the California Secretary of State and the Franchise Tax Board, both of which also have their own filing requirements. Why does a charitable organization need to register? Government Code Section 12585 and 12586 require every charitable corporation, unincorporated association, and trustee conducting business in California to register with the registry within 30 days of initially receiving property. We will discuss the definition of property, also referred to as assets, later in this presentation. An unregistered organization cannot solicit donations or operate in California. The consequences for failing to register may include penalties, administrative or legal action, and the loss of tax-exempt status with the Franchise Tax Board. So it is important for your organization to fully comply with the registration requirements. The following are the primary types of charitable organizations that may need to register with the registry. Public benefit corporations, mutual benefit corporations holding charitable assets, unincorporated charitable associations, subordinate organizations, charitable trusts, and foreign charitable entities. We will discuss the various types of nonprofit organizations that must register and report to the registry. Nonprofit public benefit corporations are created to serve the public for charitable purposes and cannot be organized for the private gain of any person. A public benefit corporation cannot distribute profits, gains, or dividends to any person. All nonprofit public benefit corporations operating in California, except, for example, educational institutions, religious organizations, and hospitals, must register and report to the registry annually. Nonprofit mutual benefit corporations are created to serve and benefit their own members. Because mutual benefit corporations are operated to support their members, donations to a mutual benefit corporation are not tax deductible. Examples of mutual benefit corporations include private homeowners associations, civic leagues, chambers of commerce, and trade and professional associations. Nonprofit mutual benefit corporations are not considered charities and are typically not required to register or report to the registry. But if a mutual benefit corporation solicits donations for a charitable program, such as a scholarship fund for students, or otherwise holds its assets for charitable purposes, it must register and report on those charitable assets. In California, an entity or group of individuals that solicits donations but is not a nonprofit corporation or a trust is generally considered an unincorporated association. Unincorporated associations that solicit charitable donations are subject to the Attorney General's oversight and must register and file annual reports. Some organizations form as a subordinate of a national organization or a parent organization. 
the registry requires both the parent organization and the subordinate organization to register and submit annual reports if they each hold and control their own charitable assets. A trust is an agreement to hold assets for the benefit of another. Charitable trusts are subject to the Attorney General's oversight, and the trustees must register and file annual reports. A charitable trust is also created when a person raises or receives money or other assets for a charitable purpose, then the assets are held in a charitable trust and the person responsible for the assets is a trustee. There are additional requirements to notify the Attorney General in connection with wills and trusts that contain charitable gifts, particularly if the gift does not name a specific charity. Additional information on when the Attorney General must be given notice can be found on the Charities page of the Attorney General's website, oag.ca.gov slash charities. Foreign charitable organizations are generally nonprofit corporations or associations and charitable trusts that were legally incorporated or formed outside California. If foreign charitable organizations are doing business in California, they need to register and report to the registry. Here are some factors to consider whether a foreign charitable organization is doing business in California. Soliciting donations from donors in California by mail, telephone, email, through advertisements in media, or any other direct means from outside of California. Conducting charitable programs or services in California, or targeting Californians with programs or services. Holding property in California, having people who perform work for the charitable program in California. If an organization located outside California does not target California, but accepts donations from anyone through its website, it probably does not need to register even if it received some donations from California, unless it meets some of the other criteria listed above. Now let's go over the steps to register with the registry. First, your organization must complete and file the initial registration form, Form CT1, with the required registration fee, and provide copies of the organization's Articles of Incorporation and Bylaws. Also, if available, please submit copies of the IRS Determination Letter and the organization's application for tax-exempt status, IRS Form 1023 or 1024. The forms and registration instructions are available on the Charities page of the Attorney General's website. Now let's go over the CT1 form. The form CT1 starts the initial registration process and it must be filed within 30 days after a charity's receipt of assets. Use the latest version of the form CT1 available on our website at oag.ca.gov slash charities slash initial reg. Keep in mind that the annual registration renewal fee report, form RRF1, is not the initial registration form. The form RRF1 is the renewal filing form and it must be filed annually after an organization becomes registered. If the form RRF1 is sent to our office before the organization is registered, it will be returned to the organization with a notice to register. 
Let's go over the required information on page one of form CT1. When filling out the form, it is important to ensure that the information provided is complete and accurate. The first page asks for the organization's legal name as stated in the founding document, such as the Articles of Incorporation, Articles of Association or Organization, bylaws, or trust instrument. It is important to provide a valid mailing address, phone number, and email as this is the information used by the registry when contacting the organization. If the organization has a website, provide the complete website address. Next, enter the Federal Employer Identification Number also known as FEIN. All organizations must apply for an FEIN from the Internal Revenue Service, including organizations that have a group exemption or file group returns. If the organization is tax exempt under a group ruling, please enter the group exemption FEIN or group number. Insert the corporation or organization number. All California corporations and foreign corporations that have qualified to do business in California are assigned a corporation number by the California Secretary of State. For corporate number information, visit the Secretary of State's website. Unincorporated organizations are assigned an organization number or entity ID number by the Franchise Tax Board upon application for California tax exemption. For unincorporated organization number information, visit the Franchise Tax Board's website. Providing the correct FEIN and corporate or organization number on the form, helps ensure accurate and prompt processing of your organization's registration application. In the next section, list all the current trustees, directors, and officers for the organization. If extra space is needed, attach a separate paper to list the remaining board members, officers, or trustees. Next, Describe in detail the charitable purpose or mission of the organization. If the organization is based outside of California, include a detailed description of the activities in California and how the California activities relate to the organization's primary charitable purpose. In addition, list all funds, property, and other assets held or expected to be held in California. Attach additional sheets if necessary. On page two of form CT1, if assets such as funds or property have been received, enter the date first received. Assets include anything of value to the charity and may include donations or grants from California residents, foundations, corporations, and governmental agencies, non-cash donations such as food, clothing, medicine, and equipment, real estate, stocks, or cryptocurrency, a loan to the charity, including startup funds from the charity's founder, Donated or volunteer services, such as office space, legal or accounting services, or free printing. Next is the annual accounting period. Enter the month and day in which the annual accounting period ends. This information is usually found in the organization's bylaws or other documents, such as the IRS Determination Letter or the IRS Form 1023. The next section requests the organization's founding documents. For California corporations, attach a copy of the Articles of Incorporation endorsed by the California Secretary of State 
and any amendments to the articles and the organization's current bylaws. If incorporated outside California, attach a copy of the endorsed articles of incorporation and the endorsed copy of any amendments executed by the state of domicile. Also, provide the date the corporation qualified through the California Secretary of State's office to conduct activities in California. For unincorporated associations, attach a copy of the instrument creating the organization, such as bylaws, constitution, and or articles of association or articles of organization. For trusts, attach a copy of the trust instrument or will and decree of final distribution, including any amendments. For trustees of charitable purposes, provide a statement describing operations and charitable purposes. In the next section, the Form CT-1 asks whether the organization has applied for or been granted tax-exempt status by the IRS. If yes, provide the date in which the application for recognition for exemption, also known as the IRS Form 1023 or 1024, was filed. Next, please enter the date of your IRS determination letter recognizing the organization as tax-exempt. Finally, enter the Internal Revenue Code section number and indicate if contributions to the organization are tax-deductible. Please also attach copies of the IRS Form 1023 or 1024 and the IRS Determination Letter with the Form CT-1. If the organization does not have copies, the IRS can provide copies upon request. The next section should be completed if the organization contracts with or otherwise engages the services of a paid fundraiser, including a commercial fundraiser for charitable purposes, fundraising council, or commercial co-venturer. Page 3 of the Form CT-1 contains a series of questions the organization should answer. If answered yes to any of these questions, please provide an explanation. Attach additional sheets if necessary. The final section of the Form CT-1 is the signature block. The form must be signed by the organization's president or chief executive officer, treasurer or chief financial officer, authorized trustee or authorized agent. Include the title of the person signing and provide the date the Form CT-1 was signed. Failure to sign Form CT-1 will result in the rejection of the registration application. Please note that the Form CT-1 is a public document which will be posted on the registry's website. If you wish to maintain the confidentiality of any attachment to the Form CT-1, you must submit a request in writing that the attachment not be maintained in the public file. Entities may view the status of their registration by using the Registry Verification Search tool on the Attorney General's website at rct.doj.ca.gov. This tool can also be used to see any notices the registry sent to the organization and any documents the organization filed with the registry. Following registration, organizations are also able to view whether they are in good standing or delinquent with the registry. To use the Registry Verification Search tool, begin by entering the organization's ID numbers into the corresponding search field and press Search. The ID number can be either the Secretary of State, Franchise Tax Board number, or the FEIN. If neither of those are available, 
the organization's name may be entered instead. Once the organization has been located, you will be able to view its registration status. The status of not registered indicates the organization still needs to submit its registration application to the registry. Organizations that have already submitted their registration application to the registry will see this status until the application has been reviewed and processed. If the organization submitted a registration application and its status is noted as current, it means the registration application has been approved by the registry and the organization is current in their renewal filings. However, please note that this does not mean the organization is in good standing with other government agencies or has obtained state and federal tax-exempt status. If the organization's status is delinquent, it means its registration application was approved by the registry, but it is required to submit renewal filings from prior years in which the organization was operating. You can find more information on a charity's registration status on the Attorney General's website. By clicking on the organization's name, once it has been located through the Registry Verification Search tool, you can view additional information about the organization, such as the current address on file and any documents the registry received or correspondence sent from the registry. A common letter the registry sends is the notice to register. This letter is sent by the registry because additional documentation or corrections must be made to the original application to complete registration. Note that if the organization fails to respond to the notice to register, the Attorney General may notify the Franchise Tax Board to revoke the organization's tax-exempt status. Another common letter sent by the registry is the Confirmation of Registration Letter. Once the registry has processed and approved the Form CT-1, a confirmation of registration letter will be sent to the mailing address that we have on file for your organization. The letter will provide the state charity registration number issued to the organization. Keep this number in a safe location because you will need to use this registration number for future filings with our office. If your organization operated several years before filing the initial registration form CT1, the organization status will be listed as delinquent with the registry and you will receive a delinquency notice with your confirmation of registration letter. This notice will request any delinquent Form RRF1 reports, fees, and documents required to clear your delinquency. An organization can only operate or solicit donations in California if it is in good standing with the registry. An organization with a delinquent status is not in good standing and may not conduct business or solicit donations in California. It is important to cure the organization's delinquent status as soon as possible to avoid consequences of delinquency, which may include late fees, suspension, revocation, loss of tax-exempt status, and loss of donations and reputation. If you received a delinquency notice and require more information or clarification, please review our delinquency webinar on information related to curing the delinquency status. The Registration Compliance Program can also be contacted at regcompliance at doj.ca.gov. 
For additional information regarding the initial registration process with our office, please visit the Frequently Asked Questions section of our website. Specific questions or concerns can be addressed by emailing registration at doj.ca.gov. We recommend newly formed organizations to review the Attorney General's Guide for Charities, located on our website. Thank you for viewing this information on registration for charities operating in California. We hope the information and instructions have been helpful.